And so if we just ask the question and say, I need help with and mm -hmm. the spirit realm won't interfere with us because we have free will and we can choose in any moment right in our bubble i can choose to do whatever i want but if i say i need help with something then it's oh, okay okay we we're and they're there always waiting for to help us with whatever yes. and so it's just like i need some guidance on this i need some help with this then the people appear the messengers appear. Digital Audio Health by Cymatrax. We have a happiness expert on the show today, and her name is Teresa Greco. Welcome to the show, Teresa. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Well, it's wonderful to have you on the show. So, I mean, we think that people are generally happy. Do you think that people are generally happy or generally unhappy? Well, statistically, 50% of people over 40 have or have had a mental illness. Mm. And then earlier than 40, even statistically, young adults, like older teens and young adults also are at like 50% of mental illness. So I would probably say there's a good, and that's only the diagnosed ones. What about the other ones that have yeah. haven't gone out for help? Another stat would be that, um, and this is based on my TEDx talk, uh, which is about, you know, whether money buys happiness, that mm -hmm. also uh, speaks to some latest research that says that 20% of the population is the least happy. Mm -hmm. Then we have the other end of the spectrum where we have 30% of the population that is very happy. And then we have that 50% in between that's, you know, on the low, it, it, the average amount. So I'd probably say about if you if you want to look at that, we've got the 50% that's kind of in, in mediocre and then the high 30s, right? And then the low percent that of 20, that is, they're just miserable and miserable for lots of different reasons. Mm -hmm. So there's the, there's the just, spectrum. Mm -hmm. There's a whole spectrum. So I would think that the audience would want to know where happiness actually comes from. Thank you. Um, well, I think this is the problem is that, yes. and it was, it was part of um, my ha happiness journey that I had achieved all the things that family, society, culture, religion told me I needed to have a happy life and still felt unhappy and unfulfilled. So fulfilling career, beautiful, healthy family, our own home, cars in the driveway, vacations here, lots of beautiful material things. And so uh, if my life checks, checks off all the boxes, why is it that I felt unhappy and unfulfilled? And I talk about this in my TEDx. Um, and it was because we are all led astray by mm -hmm. the misconceptions of where happiness is found, that we believe okay. happiness is found in our possessions, positions, titles, degrees, relationships, experiences, and appearance. So science has shown that we believe happiness is found in all of those things. But you realize that once you've achieved all of those things, so you finished your degree, you get that promotion at work, you pay off your mortgage, you find that perfect person, you go on that vacation, that you feel good for a little bit, and then you go back to feeling how you were before. And now you're chasing happiness once again, saying, okay, now what do I need to buy? Now where do I need to go? Now what do I need to do? And I was on that treadmill where, you know, you fulfill a goal or aspiration that you have and you feel good for a little bit and then you're like okay now what now what now what now what and so you're always chasing for that now what happiness somewhere in the future that I won't be happy until you fulfill that next goal or aspiration and then again we're caught in this bad cycle and so that is that is the problem because of the misconceptions around where happiness is it has 
misguided us. And so it was in the work that I've done. Well, now it's been over 10 years that I've been on my happiness journey that Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the the different methodologies and practices and um, books and podcasts and lots of different, lots of different things that led me to understand what true happiness really is. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I remember, I will be happy when or I'll be happy if And the when and if came true, and it was almost elusive that happiness sort of just vanished. Mm -hmm. And I thought, oh, my goodness, I really thought that was going to make me happy. So what do we need to do in order to stop thinking that these material things, and especially going on a trip, you know, and people wait, it's like four months before we go on our trip, and, and we always have this countdown. So if it's not in things, then where is it? Mm -hmm. So it is happiness is an innate quality of our spiritual self. Mm. And so we often don't talk about our spiritual self, right? It's weird. It's woo. -woo, But the truth is, it is the energetic part of ourselves, right? So there's the mental, emotional and physical self but there is also Mm -hmm. the spiritual self the infinite eternal energetic part that's looking out through these eyes our entire lives that the little girl that was looking out of these out of these eyes when I was eight is still there when I was a teenager as a young adult all of that experience that learning growing and expanding is that part of ourselves and so that part is always loving at peace and happy. It is our essential self. It is our infinite eternal self, our spiritual self. It is that. So that part of us is always happy and happy in abundance. Mm-hmm. It's our misalignment with the other aspects. So when our mental self isn't in alignment, our emotional self, we're not feeling happy is out of alignment and our physical self also out of alignment. We know because we have disease, we have disease, and then disease, we have aches and pains, we have lots of different symptoms that tell that tell us when our physical self isn't in alignment. So when we know that we're not feeling happy, it's because it's not that it's not there, it's there. It's it's oh, it's a part of us. It's like my arm happiness is me. And so if I'm not feeling happy, it's because I'm misaligned. And so now I have to clue in and say, okay, what aspect of myself is misaligned? So when people say, oh, happiness is a state of mind. Well, that's only one aspect of ourselves, right? That, yeah, we can think happy things. We can always look to the bright side. We can try to be more positive. Absolutely. That's how we can align our mental self. But then even though you could tell yourself, oh, this is great. I'm having the best time. I love this. And emotionally, you're not in alignment with that. You know that you're, it's like, it's being fake, right? That's Mm -hmm. where toxic positivity comes in. That people want to put the happy face on and like, oh yeah, everything's great. And emotionally, you know. (laughs) Mm -hmm. A lot of people do that. A lot of people do that. You're not feeling happy. And Mm -hmm. so that's why it's knowing what are those practices that bring you, what are the steps that you can take that bring you back in alignment with the happiness that you are. And so those Mm -hmm. moments when we do feel happy, it's because we're in alignment, right? And oftentimes it is doing the things that I, that I call your happiness toolkit. So in my toolkit, I have a Mm -hmm. whole bunch of things that I turn to when I'm out of alignment. And so for people, it could be right, right, going out for dinner and having a lovely time with friends. And you'll notice that oftentimes when you're doing that, you're in the moment, right? You're enjoying the conversation, you're enjoying the food, you're enjoying the ambiance, the movie, the, the, the music, the scenery, whatever it is that you're immersed in that and you're like, oh, this feels so good. Yeah, because you're present and you're in alignment. But then as soon as, but you could also be at dinner with like, you know, great food and music and company, but then now you're distracted on your phone and, oh no, you know, my boss just emailed me or, oh no, I just saw this post on, on social media. Oh, and now you're like pulled away, 
right? Mm -hmm. So it's so important to notice that the things that help us to feel happy are the things that we need to add to our toolkit. So who are all those people when you hang out with them? You feel so good. You feel good about life. You feel good about yourself. You feel energized. There's like this lovely exchange of ideas. And, and so those are the people that you want to try to hang out more. Or, or who are those people that when you leave their company, you feel worse about the world and you feel worse about yourself. So those are the people that you need to limit or, or cut out completely, right? So we have to be very perceptive all the time, checking in with ourselves, being mindful and saying, how do I feel in every moment? You know, do, do I feel physically in alignment? And if I don't, what steps do I need to take to do that? Do I need to go for a walk? Do I need to go see my massage therapist? Do I need to exercise? Do I need to meditate? Exercise and, and meditation are two practices that release happiness hormones in the body. So that dopamine, that serotonin, that oxytocin, those are all chem natural chemicals in the body that get secreted when we're doing things that mm -hmm. make us feel good. And so we should know what are those, those practices, those activities that we can add to our toolkit that help us to tap in. Mm -hmm. So it's important to understand that it's not the activity it's not the vacation, it's not the shopping, it's not the sports car, it's not, those things are just a vehicle that help you to connect with a part of yourself that is always happy and happy in abundance. Mm -hmm. You've said so many great things <laughs> there. Oh my goodness. So here's the thing, present state of mind. A lot of us have a hard time being present and being in the moment. And I guess one of the words that you could say is focus, focus in on yourself, what you're doing. Can you explain or break it down a little bit more how a person could be in the present state to feel because we're out of our bodies so much? right? We're taken out of our bodies because we're in this life. And so how do we reconnect to ourselves and ground ourselves in order to be in the present state of mind? Mm. I feel like at first, you almost have to set reminders, like okay. a reminder app on your phone to check oh. in, like hourly with yourself. Mm. So you have that, like the little thing on your phone, it goes off and you're like, okay, let me check in. Mm -hmm. when with you're yourself. checking in, yeah, yeah, with, check yourself. In yeah. with yourself and saying how do I feel do I feel like I need to get a bite to eat do I feel like I need to stretch my legs do I feel like I need to get a glass of water do I feel like I need to stretch do I feel like so when you when you check in you're and you're saying how do I feel in every moment and if you're mm. feeling stressed if you're feeling overwhelmed if you're feeling angry you're feeling frustrated though that's important information because all aspects of ourselves are constantly communicating with us constantly but we ignore mm. them right because yeah. we, we're so absorbed in our work we're absorbed in, you know, whatever it is that we're doing, how many people again, get so absorbed in, in their phones, in their social media, that they're not cluing in to themselves. Mm -hmm. And so you may need to make it something where it's like an external reminder for yourself to do that, because we can get pulled away. As you said, the world is constantly pulling us away it's constantly disconnecting us and misaligning us with the truth of that which we are which is love peace and happiness we are always love peace and happiness our essential self is always that it's us being misaligned so when you check in you can say and if you're feeling good, then you should make a note of that to say, oh, wow, this work is so exciting because I've lost myself. And, mm. and science calls that the flow state when mm -hmm. we're just so immersed in what we're doing that we can lose track of time because it just feels so good. And so sometimes it's that, that that's the type of work that you want to try to engage more of 
the stuff that, it, you know, it's about following your joy. And when you're tapping, you're like, oh, wow, this feels so good. Okay, perfect. You know, those are the things you add. Or, you know, you just finished having lunch with a colleague and you're like, wow, that feels so good. I need to hang out with that person more. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's that it's always like, just reflecting on yourself. Because the truth is, Rhonda, we're all living in our own happiness bubble in our own personal reality. And I almost okay. love observing people. Um, like I was at the mall yesterday and at the food court, and I was watching people, and everyone's in their own reality. Mm -hmm. And so I say that we're in our own happiness bubble. So you can look at it like uh, soap bubbles, all of us in our own soap bubble, that it's transparent, right? So me and you, our bubbles are now interacting with each other. So mm -hmm. I can see a little bit of what's happening in your bubble, and you can see a little bit of what's happening in mine. And so our bubbles are always floating around, but it's floating around also based on energy. So, you know, whatever whatever you're vibrating at, whatever energy frequency, you know, you're adding, you're also giving off. So those bubbles tend to interact more with each other, which is how me and you found each other, because mm -hmm. we're like, like same frequency. And so if people are familiar with the law of attraction, right, we're always constantly emitting a signal, a radio signal. So if I'm emitting, let's say 103.5, anything that is of that same signal is going to come back to me and be of that frequency. So we have those bubbles that are like this floating around, you know, depending where they are. So that if we're like, you know, loving at peace and happy, we tend to be floating up a little bit higher. And those bubbles that are down here that are like angry and shame and guilt and resentment and all of that, then that's so it's like when misery likes company. Yeah, that's what happens. And then you attract more of that misery <laughs> to you. Mm -hmm. So it's you have to really think about what frequency what's what channel are you broadcasting because if you don't like what's coming in if you don't like what's showing up if you don't like that which is around you you need to reflect on okay well what signal am I broadcasting because I don't like what you know what's coming to me and so in our own happiness bubble that's the only thing I can control I have full control over what's happening in my bubble I have no control over yours, no control over anyone else's bubble. But when you know that you have full control of what's happening inside your own, that is hugely empowering because it's like, oh, wow, if I can control what's inside of here, then I can, I can do whatever I want. I mm -hmm. can end the more that I continue to broadcast the signal that, that I am, I get more and more of that, which I want in my life. And so it, it's a beautiful thing because the law of attraction just keeps bringing you more of that which you love. And so it's almost like this, it makes you want to like be happier and happier inside of your own bubble because that's the only control that you have. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful analogy <laughs> um, because a lot of people will say, why is this always happening mm -hmm. to me? And I don't mean something good. I mean something bad. And, you know, it's not that we're not taking responsibility for our mood or our energy. It's a lot of people don't know, first of all, that they have an energy around them that goes out. Last I heard is nine feet, but I think it's even more than that. So our bubble is really big. And then more importantly, I don't think that people have an idea because I know I didn't, is what I'm projecting is attracting. Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. I didn't know I had control over any of that. And so there's people here right now that are listening that this is new information. Mm -hmm. And so what are the type of things that can help people go from a lower frequency to a higher frequency? Mm -hmm. Emotional self tells you that. Okay. Your emotional self. Your emotional self is your body's way of interpreting energy. So we call it emotions, but emotions is just energy. Mm -hmm. It's how our body interprets that energy because we can't see it. No. And energy has color too that some people can see, some people can't. Yes. But it's everything 
has has energy to it. And some of it, you know, with something like a water bottle, it also has energy, but it's not it's not vibrating very much, right? It's yes, it's a solid object. But those things that are alive, it they all have a frequency. That's why being out in nature feels so good because the energy that is coming off of you know anything natural, it just and we are also part of nature. So it there's not a wonder that getting outside just feels so good because it is again, it's like like ourselves, right? That all the elements of this body is all made up of nature. There isn't any like compound in this body that isn't found in nature, like or in the periodic table of elements. Our body is mm -hmm. made up of those same elements. So it's not a wonder that when we get out into nature, it, it just feels so good. Um, and so doing the things that make you feel good, that your emotional self says, this feels good, this feels right, this feels um, invigorating, this mm -hmm. feels exciting, this feels peaceful, this feels um, like harmony, this feels so that's how you know, it's cluing in when you're doing something and saying, how do you feel? And so if you're cooking and it feels relaxing to you, that's a good thing. Yeah. If you're, you know, walking your dog and it feels good. That's a good thing. So it's a, it's always follow your joy. So you have two choices and you think about them and how do you feel? So this morning, for example, um, I go to outdoor yoga on Thursdays because it's still nice weather here in the summertime. I, I live in Toronto, Canada. So um, we take advantage in the summertime to try to do you know yoga outside. And so there was a spin class happening or yoga outside. And though, and this one lady says, Oh, I don't know what to do. I signed up for spin, but I really want to do yoga. And I said, so like, why are you even thinking about this? Like, you need to come outside and do yoga. Like, you need to be following your joy. Mm -hmm. So when we have choices, you need to say, how do I feel about this one? How do I feel about this one? And your emotional self will tell you, not your rational mind, because the rational mind will say, no, it's okay because, you know, this job makes me a lot of money, so I should continue to go there. Or no, it's okay, you know, my friend's going through a hard time, but, you know, it's it's all right that she kind of verbally abuses me sometimes and, you know, doesn't even care about what's going on in my life, never asks me about myself, but it's okay. Because that's what the rational mind does. The rational mm -hmm. mind will, will tell us that what we're feeling is is not okay. And so we'll continue to do things that don't make us happy and not having us live the life that we really came here to live. Because I believe that if we always listened, you know, once some people want to say, listen to your heart, if you, mm -hmm. you're guided by your heart, then you will live the life that you are meant to live here on this planet. And instead of us always saying, what do I think? Because that's what we're conditioned to do is what do you think? What do you think? And asking everyone <laughs> around us, what do you I think? Know. What do you think? What do you think? <laughs> Nobody can answer that. Yeah. It's because when we lose touch with the true essence of who we really are, it's our, it's the only thing that we know how to do. What do you think? Because I don't know what to think and I don't know what to do. And that's why I have a bunch of people around me to tell me what I need to do. But you know, our existence is but a mere blip in time. And here we're wasting all of this time, not getting to our heart and staying in our brain. And they say that's the longest journey that you'll ever take is from your brain to your heart. You go, I remember when I heard that and I thought, what the heck does that even mean? But it's not until you feel your heart and you stop letting your brain control what you're doing is when you really step into the true essence. But a couple of times what you've talked about is, you know, remember that or when you feel that, you know, make a note of it. So and I think that's really, really powerful. The listening audience that grab a notebook and if you're not having a good day, and if something great happens, write that down. That's the direction you need to go in. And if you do that even for a week, it'll give you confidence that you can be happy, 
that you are a great person and that you don't need others uh, pointing you in a direction. You know the direction that you're to go in. Mm -hmm. And so the teachings that you're giving is phenomenal. And you're just one right after the other. I mean, I'm trying to keep up with you. And so is there any other thing that you can tell the audience that will help them from where they are right now, if they're not feeling so good about themselves, to an exercise to help them be present, ground themselves, and make that one small step towards listening to themselves instead of asking other people for their advice? Mm-hmm. Just before I answer that, I would, I, if you, if I may highlight yes. something really beautiful that you said, which is it's our disconnection from our infinite eternal self, our spiritual self that knows it has all the information. It is connected to divine intelligence, mm-hmm. the intelligence of this universe of this earth that knows when the change the seasons need to change no it it directs everything that is outside of our control um that there's an intelligence in there some people call it source some people call it god the universe whatever you want to whatever you want to call it but we have a direct connection to that information mm-hmm. and as you said, we're disconnected from that. We're taught to look around and ask everybody else, looking in books and not to say we can't get guidance in books, but it's not the only place. And it's not, and I feel like when I have direct questions about me, I need to go inward. I need to ask my inner being instead of my outer being what I need to do about Beautiful, beautiful. And so- And I love that you said that because we often don't spend enough time getting to know our inner being. We're afraid of ourselves though. So because of trauma, because mm -hmm. of past mistakes, Mm -hmm. because of and in and in many cases, we're not we're not taught. So I was grew I grew up Catholic Mm -hmm. and I knew nothing about my inner being until I started to meditate. Medi- meditation was uh, that I believe too that gateway practice that helps us to immediately connect mm-hmm. with our inner being. And I was, you know, always connected to God. Was taught to pray, and yes. you know, oh, you know, I need this, and thank you for that. I need help with yes. this, and and it was, you know, as a little girl, I was told that God was at church, and unless mm-hmm. I went to church, I wasn't. You know, I said, is it okay if I pray at home if we can't get to church? Oh, no, it's not the same. God is at church. And so I thought that's where he was. That's a small girl going to church by myself, like far distant. Something we would never let little kids go and walk. And I'm like, yeah, but I need to go to church because that's where God is. And so when I was, so what happened was I had a whole list of questions that about my life this was at the low point of my life Mm -hmm. that I said only God can answer no one else can answer doesn't matter I need help I need to hear from God Mm -hmm. and so I went to a medium and I said I need help I have questions I need them answered and and the the questions were why aren't I happy with my life Mm -hmm. and and if I had arrived at half my life because for me it was the milestone of turning 40 so, it, you know, everyone has their crossroads moment. Sometimes it's an illness. Sometimes it's a death. It's a loss of some kind. For me, it was just that big milestone. And I thought, well, well if I've arrived at half, at half my life. Could I imagine living the same life for the next 40 years? And I couldn't. I'm like, yeah. I, I can't. I'm not, I'm not happy. I'm not happy. In the first half, yeah. how am I going to do that? <laughs> and so I'm like, I need help. I need help. So I went to a medium and she said to me, well, spirit is telling me you need to meditate. And I'm like, I don't know what that is. And that's because this was like, you know, over 12 years ago where yes. meditation was still weird and woo woo. Where now yes. it's, oh, everybody's meditating, which I'm so happy to hear. And even if they're not, they tell you that they are. <laughs> Because they don't want to be, they don't want to be the lost leader. <laughs> That's 
funny. Whereas before my family told me, Teresa, you need to stop. You're a part of a cult. Like you need to, Oh, I and know. they thought. And so I was like, oh, okay, I guess I can't talk to anybody about what I'm doing. No, keep it to yourself. <laughs> Yes, exactly. And so it was from the and and so what happened was I ended up going to a meditation center, um, which ironically was directly across the street from my Catholic church. I called them up. I had always seen this like little sign outside this like front door. It was called the Heartlight Center. And I was like, what are they doing there? <laughs> and so and so I was like, always like that. But I'm like, I called them and I said, hi, like. Spirit is telling me I need to meditate, but I don't know what that is. I don't know what to do. And so they said, well, we have a meditation circle once a month. You can come. We'll help you get started, whatever. So I went and they will tell you that I cried for an, for an entire year every single time I went because Mm -hmm. the moment I connected with spirit, it was like, Mm -hmm. it was like that sound of the angels that you would hear like, like that. That yes. spirit was trying to talk to me my entire mm-hmm. life, including mm-hmm. my inner being. Yes. Right? Who knows? Very touching. Yes. Right? Very, Who knows very why touching. I'm here? Mm-hmm. Why I came here? Why did I come to have an earthly experience? It knows what I came here to do. It knows what my purpose is, what my mission is. It knows all of that. And so I was like, wow. And so then I had so much resentment towards my religion because I was like, wow, you kept this away from me. my entire life by telling Mm. me that that God was at church God is inside me and all around me in everything I can never be disconnected doesn't matter where I am Mm -hmm. I'm always I'm always a part of that it is it is it is me right and so um when you said what can people do to like raise their vibration it is doing the things that bring them joy doing the things that make them feel at peace, doing the things that that they love to do, because we are loving at peace and happy. The core of who we are is all of those things. And so our guidance is always, how how do I feel when I meditate? How do I feel when I play with my kids? How do I feel when I'm just, you know, holding my dog? How do I feel when I'm cooking, drawing, painting, writing, all the infinite things that we can do in a day? Mm-hmm. Like how exciting is that, that there's an infinite amount of things we could do and to be able to choose the things and we can, we can choose mm-hmm. in our happiness bubble. I can choose to do the things that bring me the greatest joy. I can have the food and drinks that bring mm-hmm. me the greatest joy and make my physical body feel good. Right. And so it's, it's always listening, listening to our bodies, listening to, to our emotional self, our mental, all of it. And Mm -hmm. saying, do I feel in alignment? Yes. And really, it's our duty to ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's our duty to ourselves, our walk. And it takes some bravery to do what you did. And to even though uh, you were really emotional, and that's going to happen, it's going to happen a lot. When you start taking the layers that you've built, and you don't even know that you've built them. until you start coming home to the trueness of yourself. Mm-hmm. Thank you. It's just beautiful. Thank you so much. You're listening to the Rhonda Grant Show right now, whose podcast has been treated with digital audio health by my sponsor, Cymatrex. And today I have the absolute pleasure to be in the company of Teresa Greco. And she's going to let you know how you may find her on social media, because that's where everybody is. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so you can find me on my website. It's TeresaGreco.ca. On my website, you'll see all the host of, of different things that I do. Um, everything I do is always around how may I serve? How may I serve? How may I serve? Mm. Um, from my teaching to my uh in, you know, writing. I have you know some best-selling co-authored books. Um the articles that I share with various publications um, to try to give people the steps that they can take to live their happiest lives. Um, So you can find me on my website on social media. You can find me on Instagram, Teresa Greco underscore steps to happiness. 
uh, Steps to Happiness with Teresa Greco on Facebook. Um, I have four different shows that I'm a part of. I have two of my own shows Beautiful. that are called The Steps to Happiness with Teresa Greco. Um, so that's on Soul Liberty TV. I also have another uh, show called The Happy Hour, and that's on uh, Skyward TV as well as Hopeful Radio. And then I have two um, shows that I do with other people as well. So Soul Liberty Today on Mondays, I'm on that show as a co-host. I'm also on Building Joy. It's a brand new um, show that I'm doing, and it's a little more targeted to the construction industry. I'm um, nice. bringing a little bit more joy there. So, um, yeah, lots going on, lots of fun things. And my, again, everything I do is about trying to give people the practical steps that they can do to live their happiest lives. Because I feel so much about when we talk about mental health, like May was mm-hmm. mental health month. But there is no talk about the mental health part. There is only talk about the mental illness. That's it. I think this is mental health month. But why are we only talking about the mental illness? And there's no talk about what to do. Just at the end, they go and say, oh, speak to your health practitioner at the end. Mm. And I'm like, oh, wow. You just listened to an entire show or an entire episode of talking about depression or anxiety or whatever, but you gave people no practical things that they can do to actually get themselves out of that, to bring Mm -hmm. themselves on the healthy side. And it takes action. It takes, it takes checking in all the things that we've talked about today are the things that, that we need to do. Communicate with our inner being. Do the things that, that bring us joy and eliminating the things that, that don't or limiting the things that don't. Mm-hmm. And so um, we talked about a lot of those, a lot of those steps today. Mm-hmm. We sure did. And, <laughs> and that's what I like about it. I mean, people, the, the takeaways from this show was incredible. And I think that what we do is uh, we don't make ourselves important enough and we need to make ourselves the most important thing. We need to take care of our vessel. We need to take care of our spirit, our soul. We need time to ourselves and it doesn't matter what that looks like because then we enrich others around us just by being in their presence and we don't have to, and we stop. You don't have to do as much. The stress starts eliminating from your life it's just a whole shift of human consciousness and it can be your own consciousness that we're talking about. What extraordinary discovery have you found in your life, Teresa? I would say um, two things, which is uh-huh. why I'm on a mission to help make the world a happier place is what true happiness really is. So what I know about happiness is was information given to me from spirit. This was when I talked about the direct connection to a divine intelligence, that all the great discoveries on this planet, you know, what Einstein discovered and and Edison and, and Tesla and all the great things. Those things were not found by going on social media and looking at whatever was already here. It's about about tuning in again to your inner being and Mm -hmm. saying, okay, you know, what, what's coming through to me right now? And what, what am I most passionate about? Because that is the, that is what, that is our work. When people Mm -hmm. say, oh, I don't know what's my purpose. I thought the same thing too. I thought, well, maybe this this feeling of a void that it didn't matter how much more I bought how much more I did how much more I did I went to school where I went it didn't matter I felt like I I could never feel it there was always something missing in my life and I thought mm-hmm. I'm not living my true purpose yes full potential no that because that's not really what per that's not really what purpose is um the void. So when you said about what's the two discoveries, so the first one is what true happiness is, which is came from all the spiritual work that I did and my and really my conversations with spirit. I'm a Reiki master. Um, I'm a channeler as well. So it's my direct communication with my high with my higher self, which is divine intelligence, source, God, whatever you want to call it, that shared the information with me. And then As I became a happier person, I thought, well, I can't just keep this information to myself. 
I need to try to like tell as many people as I can. And that's where my mission came to that. I'm like, well, what are all the ways that I can do this? Well, I can do it through shows. I can through I can do it through talking on other people's shows. I can do it through my two TEDx talks that I have out there. I can do it through the articles I write, through the books that I'm a part of. I'm trying to do it like through as many like, possible ways that there are to share mm -hmm. what <clears throat> true happiness really is. The second discovery is that the void that I was feeling was my, again, disconnection, I think, from my spiritual self, but also from my true and authentic self. So I had been wearing many different masks, trying to be the perfect mom, wife, okay. daughter, sister, employee, whoever I needed to be, because <clears throat> society and the world around us is very loud at telling us, we like you more when you look like this. We like you more, we love you more, we accept you more when you behave like this or yes. when you do these things, right? So yes. as children, you know, as we're making the way th through the world and trying to like figure out what this all, what is, what is life on earth, you know, people around us are very vocal, teachers, our parents, family, friends, religious yes. leaders that say, oh yes, we will love you and like you and accept you if you're more like this. And yes. so that led to me losing myself. You lose yourself. Losing yourself. And I only discovered that I had lost myself at the milestone of turning 40 that I'm like, I don't even know who I am because yeah. My entire life, I've been trying to serve others and doing that with the many different masks. So when I was at work and a teacher, okay, this is Teresa being her teacher self. And then at home, right. and this is a, this is me with my in-laws. This is me with my parents. This is me with my friends. Lots oh, of cool. masks. Yeah. And so when you said about, it's only until you peel back the layers mm -hmm. and you get in touch with your true and authentic self, which is like your inner being mm -hmm. that you realize, oh, wow, I haven't been, I haven't been living like who I really am for most of my life. And now again, I always have to check in when, you know, a situation comes up or opportunity comes up, I have to say, well, am I doing this because this is really what I want to do? Or am I doing this because I feel like you know, people will like me more. I'll get more followers. I'll get like, that <laughs> things mean anything. It has no. to be about, am I following my joy? Because my joy exactly. is my true and authentic self guiding me towards the life that I came here to live and not the life that, you know, all of the outside world told me that I needed to live. Mm -hmm. You know, you said something really important there. You know, you recognized that something was missing. And that is a big deal in our journey is when you start to realize that no matter what you do, how great you do it, how you fit the mold of who you're supposed to be in the family environment that you've grew up in, you come to a point in your life where you say you really feel like you've missed something or you feel that something's missing. And then you say, well, if there's something missing, how do I find it? And we might want to fill up another void that we feel that we have. Instead of going inward, we continue to go outward. So if you feel right now that something's missing, you really need to go inside and start having a conversation with yourself. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful, beautiful teachings. I, I just love it. Do you feel that you have crafted your journey, been called to it, or a bit of both? I feel like I have been living my destiny um, mm -hmm. as, a, as an educator. I, I, I'm at the core of who I am. I'm a teacher, and I just teach lots of different things. So I was um, you know, a classroom teacher with elementary students for a part of my life. Then I became an educational technologies consultant, which I still am. And then I still work with um, students, but 
also now with educators and parents on different types of educational technologies that we use in schools. And I work primarily with students that have special needs doing that. Um, and so then I'm teaching, you know, concepts around that. And then as a certified life coach and motivational speaker, then I teach so much about all of this personal development um, mm -hmm. content too. And so I feel like that is what I need. Like, that's what I, that's what I, that's who I am. That's what I need to do. Yes. I've just been doing it in so many different capacities, um, which I think is, is beautiful. And that's why I said, well, I can't just hold this information to myself. I need to try to share it um, through my dissertation also, right? That I yes, yes. And my doctorate with my dissertation on happiness too. So that's also like another legacy um, project to, to being able to like leave this this information with the world you know once once I'm gone from here um and so um oh I, I forgot now oh well you were had asked me oh if I feel you, called so yes, I feel called. like I and I feel like it found me too that after yes. university I was like oh well what am I going to do with this English degree and then I had this random conversation with my neighbor that said oh you know had you ever heard of um in in that case it was Montessori so mom and I it all started with me um teaching in Montessori and then I was like no what's that all about and then that's how I discovered my calling um and then my purpose because one of my questions that I had asked a spirit is, am I living my true purpose? And yes. because maybe that's where the void was coming from. And a lot of people feel like that. Yes. And you know that only 25% of people actually feel like they're living their purpose because oh. we believe that purpose is, you know, one big thing that yes. we have to do. And it's actually not. No. It's more about feeling on purpose in every moment of our life. And so when we are living the life, we really came here to live like on a soul level, then we chose mm -hmm. to come and have this mm -hmm. experience. We, we have, have like this path carved out. Our emotional self tells us that we're on path with that because we're always feeling happy. And it's like, yes, yes, you're on purpose. You're on purpose all the time. When you're like a young mom and you're at home with your family and bringing them to school and their activities, did I feel on purpose? I did. I oh, felt yes. like I was doing exactly what I needed to do and I was in exactly the right place doing it at that time but then as they grew older then I felt on purpose doing more of the other work that I was doing and do I feel on purpose with the work that I'm doing now yes I'm always feeling on purpose because I feel happy and I feel like I'm doing what I was meant to do mm -hmm. um and that's coming from an internal place, not an external place. I'm not doing Beautiful. what I think other people want me to do. I feel like I'm doing, I'm doing God's work. I feel like I'm doing God's work. Um, and I've been doing God's work my entire life with all the different things that I'm doing. Yes. But I think we know that by asking ourselves, are we happy? <laughs> yeah, are we it's happy? A compass. It's a compass. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to touch on something that you briefly mentioned, but then it went into something else, is that you were talking to your neighbor, and your neighbor said, have you heard? And one of the things that we sh mustn't miss are present day messengers. Mm -hmm. And those are the messengers that will come and say something to you. And it might not seem to be a big deal at the time. But boy, when you start reflecting back over your life to see what you miss because you weren't paying attention or your, your conscious awareness wasn't at a point where you could take advantage of that, do something about it. And so present day messengers may be a person just like you ran into just in the morning and, you know, morning at the neighbor talked to you and said, have you heard about the Montessori school? And then you think, well, uh, I'm going to check that out. And ends up being a beautiful part of your life, but it can be anything. And so I really like that you touched on that because a lot of times we listen to what people tell us to do or think we should do. And then just off in this little area, there'll be somebody who just mentions something that almost is in a whisper 
And if you weren't paying attention, you would have even missed that whisper and you ignore it because this person, and you talked about this, is being so loud. People are so loud to get your attention and it keeps you from yourself. It keeps you from your mission and it keeps you from listening and paying attention to messages that are gonna help direct you on your journey. So, oh boy, was this ever a lot of fun. I am so pleased that you joined us and shared so much information. I know that you've got, you're like a rocket launcher and I know that you've got a lot there to teach mm-hmm. and, you know, I can see us doing this again because you've got a lot to teach and there's people who need to hear your teaching. So thank you so much for being on the show, Teresa. Thank you so much. Can I add just maybe a small thing to what you just said? Absolutely. Yes, you may. And so if we just put it out to the universe and say, I have questions about, so it was like, well, what am I going to do with this, with this English degree? That was the question. What am I going to do? And I feel like our path finds us, whatever Mm -hmm. it is that what's meant for you will find you that which we're seeking is also seeking us. I think that's really, yeah, that's really, and and that's the truth, right? Mm -hmm. So when you're seeking direction, when I look at all the different positions that are out there that people do all the different types of work, I'm like, I wasn't called to do that guy's work. No, right. I was like, it didn't find me when, like, you know, whether it's a border control person or, or like lots, there's, there's an infinite amount of things to do on this planet. And it's like, it didn't find me. It didn't come into my reality because it wasn't meant for me to find. Yes, right? That's right. And so if we just ask the question and say, I need help with and Mm -hmm. the spirit realm won't interfere with us because we have free will and we can choose in any moment right in our bubble I can choose to do whatever I want but if I say I need help with something then it's okay okay we're and they're there always waiting for to help us with whatever and so it's just like I need some guidance on this I need some help with this then the people appear the messengers appear, the, the, it's like, I, the things that have found me, it was like an, a, a random email. I was like, oh, mm-hmm. what's this about? Somehow it's in your inbox or like yes. a website shows up and you're like, what's this about? Next thing you know, it's like, that was like the next job I had to be like, it's just, I'm telling you, I as know. soon as you yeah. ask the signs and symbols show up for you, but you just have to like, know that as soon as you ask, the answer is going to be provided to you. You yes. just have to remain open and receptive yes. to like how it's going to show up. So it always does. You have to yes. ask and then you have to look. So it's attention, sorry, intention. So you said the mm-hmm. first, then it's attention. So the second step is, okay, where's the answer? Where's the answer? Where's the answer? Yes. Yeah, you and can miss the, it. And then the last is action. So it always takes action. You're not going to have like, you know, some people say, oh, manifestation, right? You talk about manifesting. They're like, Oh, all I have to do is ask the universe and it shows up. Well, you need the action step. The for third part is the action. So now you need to like, you know, when the job shows up, you actually mm-hmm. need to apply. You actually need to fill out. You need to do the interview. You need to do the work in order to get that perfect that perfect job or or whatnot. So mm-hmm. thank you for that. Beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> Thanks so much again. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rhonda. Thank you for listening to Courting Your Soul with Rhonda Grant, whose podcast has been treated with digital audio health by my sponsor, Simatrack theme song for Courting Your Soul is Sun on the Water, composed and performed by John Park Wheeler.